Welcome to my kitchen. You're watching Rogers TV Farm to Fork. My name is Chef Connie Powers. Today, I'm taking you on a tour to a dairy farm. We're going to Oakwood, Ontario to meet Danielle DeVos and her family on Vosbray Farm. There they have dairy. They have a cheese room where she is learning to make cheese. Today's star of the show is going to be Danielle DeVos and her Gouda. We brought some Gouda home and we are going to be making two dishes. So let's get started. While I was there, uh, Danielle was expecting her third child. So we, the discussion went to uh, baby led weaning. It went to starting solids and the appropriate foods for that purpose. So I decided today we're going to make two things. We're going to make a Gouda omelet cup that is perfect to start finger foods for a baby. It's a little omelet cup. That's quick, that's easy. And then we're gonna put that in the oven and we're going to start an overnight breakfast strata. This is a dish that you can make as a casserole. It's perfect for the Christmas season that you can put it in the refrigerator overnight. In the morning, you pop it into the oven and everybody's got a healthy breakfast. So to start off, we're going to do the omelet cups. To start off, you need a six cup. This doesn't make a lot. It's quick, it's easy. You can make them in, in a flash. First, we need to grease the muffin pan. I just use a little bit of spray. All right, the pan is greased and I am going to start putting in the pre-sauteed vegetables. So previously I sauteed uh, about a quarter cup of diced onion, about a little tiny bit of bell pepper, and then there's a little tiny bit of ham in there, but I diced it really, really fine. So this has been pre-cooked. All I need to do is add uh, some Gouda cheese, some uh, eggs, a little custard, some salt and pepper, put those into those muffin cups and into a 350. It will only take minutes. So we're going to add about three eggs and then you make it proportionate to how many you want to make. Okay, so what's in here so far is uh, a little bit of onion, a little bit of green pepper, and a little bit of diced ham, eggs, salt and pepper. Now you can judge for yourself if your child is uh, just starting solids, you might want to puree the vegetables. If this is for an older child, uh, like a quick breakfast, you could leave them like this. Okay, I think what I had in there with the three eggs, I've got enough liquid. And now I'm going to add in about a half a cup of Gouda cheese. This is going to give it a delicious crusty flavor, a nice cheesy flavor, lots of nutrition in this. Okay, these are quick. I'm going to put these into the muffin pan, get them into the oven. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to start the overnight strata. back. You're watching Rogers TV Farm to Fork. My name is Chef Connie Powers and today we're on a tour of Vosbray Farm in Oakwood, Ontario. We met Danielle DeVos and we discussed Gouda cheese. She makes Gouda cheese on the farm so we brought some back and that's what we're cooking with today. Earlier I put some omelet cups. They're good for children, they're good for a quick breakfast and they can be made 
right there. You just put a little bit of onion, a little bit of green pepper if, if your children like that, uh, a little bit of Gouda cheese, and then make a custard with some eggs. You put them in muffin pans. They're in the oven at 350 for about 15 to 17 minutes. And then you'll have a nice little omelet cup. Those are cooking. Let's start the strata. Now, with Christmas coming, you often need a breakfast for uh, maybe a family with a lot, not a lot of time to make it. This is a breakfast casserole. It's an overnight strata that you can make, and it uses Gouda cheese. It uses eggs half and half. Let's get started on it. First, we're going to pre-cook some breakfast sausage. So uh, take your skillet and heat it with a little bit of canola oil. Now, like any of these things, you can tailor them. I have grated a little bit of apple because my family likes apple. So I'm going to put a little apple with a breakfast sausage that's nice. You could have even put some of the grated apple into the muffins. You can take the green pepper out. You could add zucchini. T tailor it. Tailor it to what your family likes. So we have got some canola oil in our saute pan. And we're going to add a little bit of onion. It's a nice sizzle. We're going to add, uh, now the recipe is uh, going to be at the end of this episode. Tailor it to how many people. The, the, ep the recipe that I'm putting up, is the base is going to call for 10 eggs. That's rather a large recipe. You can cut it in half or you can double it, whatever you need. So I'm going to put, uh, we're making it with about a five egg custard today. So I'm putting in maybe about a half cup of onion. Diced very fine, you don't want it to be the center of attention. And then I'm going to put in some breakfast sausage. So this is out of the casing and this is just going to be sauteed. Now I'm going to place it here and then we'll break it up. So this is about uh, 500 grams. You could make it with less if that suits your family. So I'm going to break that up, make sure that it's in, in small pieces, crumbles. Now, as I said, my family likes apple, so I have grated uh, a nice matsu apple, and I'm going to put in maybe a half a cup. That's going to add some sweetness and it's going to add some tenderness to that pork sausage. I'm just going to uh, put it in directly with the sausage and the onions. You can add more, you can add less. Use your creativity. Remember, we're listening for the oven because our omelet cups are in there and they take very little time. They can be stored in your fridge for the week and you can take one out. You can freeze them as well and take one out and just microwave it enough to thaw if one person needs a breakfast. All right, this is going to brown a little bit and we need it to be fully brown and then we're going to drain it and then we're going to get busy assembling the strata. What we're going to do right now is take you on the tour of Vosprey Farm. Enjoy this. Hey everybody, welcome to our series, Farm to Fork. We're here today on Skyline Road in Oakwood, Ontario at Vosprey Farms. We're going to meet a local dairy farmer and a local cheesemaker. We're going to go over and ask Danielle all about this and see what she has to show us. So this is a multi-generational farm. I, I see two or three generations already. Here. Yes. Is this two? Um, yeah, there was there was three that he just pulled out, but definitely two generations. Okay, so take us back to the original generation, the original owner of this idea farm. Right, so Jack and Erky DeVos, which is my husband's Oma and Opa, started this in 1962, um, and then it just kind of went on from there. And then they had children. Yes. Those sons grew continued with the farm yep. and then now that's J Jack's grandchild is your husband, husband. yeah so it's small 
It's 24 by 24 total. Used it for storage, and then it was built two two years ago in November. Well, one year ago in November. Um, oh. So I've only been operational a year as of no November. Okay. And when the cheese that you're making, are you marketing it here on the farm store, or does it go out to different retail outlets? It is wholesale and retail outlets, um, and then it's farm gate pickup as well. Oh, that's amazing. I just don't cut and wrap here, so I have to take it to. Uh, inspected butcher shop in order to do that and then bring it back in I see. but it's in the works of getting it so that I can do everything here do everything here packaging everything. yeah that's great this is my vat it does everything for me um, pasteurizes the cheese cuts it I just have to add different instruments to it to do it all and then so are you mostly making cow cheese here? Yes. Um, I was doing cow and goat. The market isn't crazy for goat in this area, especially because there is some other local producers of goat. So, and because we're cow dairy. Um, Farmers of Ontario, you're licensed to produce pretty much what they tell you you can produce. Oh, I see. So I'm licensed to do what I do um, which is Gouda Swiss and, and cheddar. cheddar styles they can't be exact of them which is fi fine and makes sense because that happens where they're actually originally from um, in my licensing I could also do a curd and I can do like a ricotta style cheese um, we were pretty much like just starting out so I would love for him to try it again because obviously when you're just kind of starting in a new True. facility everything's so hit and miss but all right, so you've got up here, it looks like a jalapeno cheddar. Uh, jalapeno gouda. Ooh. Yes. Um, so and they, they've been waxed. Yes. And then how long do they age? So they have to age a minimum of six weeks, and then oh. anywhere after that, um, if they're sitting around for like two months or more, they get another waxing just to keep that moisture in them. But they generally sell before I have to get to that point, which is what I want to. So, well, does anybody just purchase an entire wheel? Yep. Mm -hmm. And then what's this whitish one? Um, so that is a caramelized onion one. Huh? Um, it's still in the waxing process. And then I have some. This is a cheddar style here. And then down here is a Swiss style. And then there's a bunch of Gouda along there. Why is the Gouda done in red wax? Just the, that's actually sheep. Oh, okay. Yes. So we milk on a 24 stall internal rotary parlor. So the cows come on and it spins like a carousel and then they come off right beside where they come on. Oh, hi ladies. So they were milked at 5.30 this morning. And so how long is that cycle now? again tomorrow morning they will milk we milk twice a day so they'll milk again tonight at 4 30. Um, our milking herd is around 175 right now this barn we have around 300 total okay and so you will milk 300 cows twice a day 175 cows twice a day okay so we keep a beef bowl in our heifers as kind of we call it a cleanup bowl um, so anything that doesn't get end up getting bred will get bred by the beef bowl and for my meat program it's beef dairy cross so it gives the best marbling but they can fatten up in time in order to get them to butcher. Okay, so they are, they calf, and that, like, you have to have them calf in order to produce milk. Yes. But, like, then they produce milk for how long? For seven months, and then we dry them off for two months before. And then they produce another calf. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. I always wondered about how long do you... <laughs> <That's a> side <laughs> eye. <laughs> I always wondered how long they produced before they yeah, were able to reproduce. Roughly seven months. It depends on their genetics and everything as well. Some um, end up being dried off a little earlier or a little later. If they're still giving lots before dry off, then they can stay on a bit longer. But okay. And this is just keeping the feed? The feed to them, yep. It's like a giant Roomba. Yep. Look, we have some calves. Yep. So what's going on here? Why are they, so, are they um, really new? Yeah, they're 
all under a week old. This pen right here is our maternity pen oh, um, and our dry cow pen. So they'll all calve in here and then they kind of just get brought here before they go to our official calf barn. It's two years until they have their calf, their first calf. Well, this is the first time I've been on a dairy farm oh, okay. of this, this magnitude. Yeah. And so like to see the different stations, yep. I get this, this life process now. And then when they get too old to milk, are they kept here long or um, we or too keep, old to produce another calf? Yeah, and then we'll send them off. But th we have some cows in here that are eight, nine years old, and they're oh. still they're still milking for us. So I guess that that just made me think of how long can they produce calves? Yeah. So are these? cows to be mated? Is that what the issue is? Yeah, so they've um, been bred and if they haven't caught, then he's there to do that, to do his to, job. To <laughs> make sure. Yes. So how much milk do you produce in a I'd say a day. If you're breeding, if you're milking these many cows, we're just over 5,000 liters a day. We're every other day pickup, and we're just over 10,000 liters every other day. Every so. other day. That's when they pick up. Yeah. We feed our milk after it's been pasteurized to our calves in order to not overship. Like we're we're overshipping right now if we didn't have other ways to use our milk. Okay, and so, that quota is so that it, all dairy farmers have an opportunity. Exactly. So that and then so that the plants aren't getting overrun and not being able to do anything with all this excess milk mm -hmm. kind of thing, right? So. Okay. So a wheel of cheese like that, what would that retail for? Um, so they're f roughly four kilogram wheels. And for instance, say the Gouda style, which we've named Dutch because it associates Gouda and Dutch, mm -hmm. um, is around $120. It, that's give a lot or take. Yeah. But it is, yeah, a lot of cheese, four kilograms. So... But maybe a deli would buy that and retail it? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, for the most part, it is places like that or um, breweries like to buy it because oh. then they just can cut it up and serve it as charcuterie. Um, otherwise, I get it packaged and cut and packaged and then um, I'm in at like Farmer's Butcher Shop, Mariposa Woolen Mill, um, Willow Tree Farms over in Port Perry and then um, a couple wholesalers market at, at farmers markets as well for me. Okay, I wondered what if, what farmers markets you were at. Yeah, so... Um, but there's no farm store here, or is there a pickup on the farm? There is. Uh, just contact me, and it's a farm gate sale kind of thing. Hopefully in the future, next year or so, um, I'll have more of a farm store, but You've there's got a lot. other things <laughs> in the works. Going on, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I really want to thank you for bringing us onto your farm. I know that, uh, you know, you've got a lot of cattle. You've got a uh, sanitary system going on in the cheese making. So I really appreciate you bringing us here and showing us your slice of life. Yeah, no problem at all. It was great to have you guys out and be able to, um, yeah, show you exactly where milk is produced and how and where cheese is made. I'll think of it differently now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And we're back. I hope you enjoyed that tour. The, the omelet cups have just come out, and I'd like you to look at them. One is missing. A uh, cameraman may have had to have a snack. While you were on the tour, I started assembling. So the pork sausage, and I put a little bit of apple. I put a little bit of onion, some diced green pepper, any of those things you can take out, and you can add things. Uh, I also decided I wanted to add a little bit more seasoning to it. So I've added some uh, oregano, some sage, and some thyme. Just a little bit of a poultry seasoning type of thing to add that flavor that sausage just really marries well with. So we're going to start with our bread. So this overnight casserole is something like with egg custard, a bread, and some meat. And you put it in the fridge in the morning. It's ready for the oven. Today I'm going to make it and we're going to let it soak for three hours and then we're going to cook it. Let's start making our breadcrumbs. Now the 
if it's for a Christmas, if it's for a special occasion, you might want to cut off the crusts and make it a little bit more uniform. To me, that's good breadcrumbs, whatever you want to do with it. Today, I'm going to leave the crusts on. I don't like the waste. So make them in cubes. And what I'm doing, remember this today, I'm making the base of five eggs. So I've got about a half loaf of brioche bread. A nice egg bread makes this delicious. We're going to set that aside. What we do, we have all of our ingredients now assembled. What we do is we'll just start layering, sort of like you would layer a casserole, like a lasagna. This, we will start off with the bread. So what I have is uh, about a nine by nine oblong pan that I have sprayed because you don't want it to stick. We're going to start off with a layer of our bread cubes. You want uh, two layers, so you can determine how many you have. You want a bottom layer, and then you're gonna want a top layer. So I'm going to put that much into our bottom layer, and I'm going to start preparing the eggs. So I'm going to use about five eggs. If I feel like we don't have enough, then I'll add some more eggs. So I have three six, I have seven, and I kind of think that I want to stick with that amount. It's, it's all about making the right amount of custard, so just watch how you're doing it. Then we're going to add, we're going to whisk that, and we're going to add about a cup and a half of half and half cream. All right, into the eggs, I'm going to start adding, uh, I've added some kosher salt. I'm going to add in some parsley. It adds a nice little bit of color. Uh, I'm going to add in some pepper, fresh ground pepper. If that's something your family doesn't like, leave it out. And I'm going to add in a tiny bit of this uh, sage into the filling, not a, not a lot because there is some into the sausage meat. And into that, I'm going to add about a cup to a cup and a half. Now the full recipe that is on this episode will say two cups because we're talking about 10 eggs. Now I'm adding some to the custard, but I'm also going to add some directly when I'm layering. Okay, I think I've got all the eggs mixed up, all of them whisked up nicely into a custard. And now the fun begins, we can start creating this. soaked three hours 
It was left in the refrigerator to just absorb all of the juices for three hours. You can easily do this overnight, cover it with a, a cling film, and then in the morning, set it out, let it come to room temperature, put it in the oven at 350. This was a half size of the recipe that's on this episode. And so it took about 35 minutes rather than an hour. You can put it in, let your nose tell you what's happening. If your kitchen starts to smell, it means it's getting close to finishing. Thank you to Danielle DeVos and her family for taking us on the tour to Vosbray. It was a great tour and we got delicious Gouda and some ideas on how to use it. Until next time, keep cooking.